Hello, my name's Hassan Khan. Welcome to my 24. And in this session, I'm looking at fishing in weed. Now, being an adopted northerner, it's only right that I stay up north for my 24. So my venue choice is the beautiful Clearwater Fisheries Kellett Lake. And as the name suggests, there's an abundance of clear water and an abundance of weed, which can really scramble people's heads when fishing it. I'm gonna give you a guide as to how I tackle fishing in the weed and hopefully manage to land some of the beautiful, dark, scaly carp that inhabit these waters. Now I've had a very quick lap around the lake. The lake itself is comprised of two bays, a smaller back bay, which is where I am now, and a larger bay. Now the larger bay has a fair few anglers spread across it, and in this back bay, which is separated by a really shallow bar from the main bay, there's an abundance of weed that's hitting the surface pretty much all the way throughout it. And in amongst that weed, there's the odd fish moving around, <clears throat> showing high up in the water. So what I've decided to do to try and get off the mark as quick as possible and take some pressure off, is I'm gonna present a bait above the weed, floater fishing, where the fish are, but also ensuring that I've got presentation as quick as possible and hopefully nick a quick bite. Enough of me talking, I'm going to get some floaters out, but before I do that, I'm going to start my 24 right now. In weed, it is so, so effective because you are presented all the time. The fish in these conditions, they're drawn to the weed beds because of the oxygen that, that the weed beds are pumping out with their photosynthesis throughout the course of daylight hours. They're sitting sometimes quite dormant within the weed. They're not going to drop down to the bottom and feed on a bag, say five, 10 foot below them, or however deep your lake is. But if there's a mixer that drifts over their head, a little bit of scent and slick from some oil on them, um, they don't have to move. It is there for them to eat and, and they will start feeding. Um, obviously, in terms of a, a hooking arrangement, you've not really got to worry about what you're landing on because you're landing on the surface of the water. And unless the weed is all the way to the surface and snarling your hook point as it drifts, you're going to be presented and you're going to be in with a chance of hopefully catching yourself a, uh, a surface caught carp. Unfortunately, we're a combination of bird life in the form of swans, cygnets, ducks, seagulls, it didn't really pan out. The fish were taken, but rather subtly, um, not in enough numbers for me to really put a controller float out there and try and hook one. Um, so it was on to another plan. What I decided to do was try and target two areas around a reed line um, on the far margin. Uh, there were two spots at either side of the margin where I was able to cast my leads across to the other side, go round with a baiting spoon and drop a, a solid bag um, on one of the clearer areas and also a supple hinge rig on one of the areas that was slightly weedier with a small amount of flake over the top. And they were two traps that were set. My third rod, that went on a little solid bag placed in the corner where I'd seen sort of a prevalence of, of fizzing um, in the hope that that fizzing would continue and I'd get a quick bite. Right, I think we're roughly, I couldn't tell you the time, but a few hours in, and what I've decided to do is through a combination of not seeing the same amount of fish here, having a few issues with swans and ducks, I've decided to take these rods out. I've had a little walk up the other end. There's a nice warm southerly wind pushing right down the bottom end of the lake, and there's a few fish showing on it. So I'm gonna move down to that end. There's a swim free, and hopefully get on a bigger group of fish, find a clear spot, fish three rods on that clear spot, hopefully. And who knows, maybe get our first fish. But here, it just doesn't look as good as it does when we got here. And I'm feeling that far end. 
for me, weed is a feature. Um, it's something to fish to, something that holds natural food. Um, and I genuinely enjoy fishing weedy venues, not, not only just because the carp are inherently darker, it's clear water, um, but also because it is a technical test. You have to really think about your angling. You have to be able to interpret what's out there effectively, position your rigs. Um, and it just, it's a different dimension to, to an angling session. You're not just going out there and, and being able to chuck anywhere and, and fish. You're able to work at something, figure something out and feel like you've earned the bite when fishing in and around weed. So, taking the decision to move on this wind, and now the case is trying to find a spot out there to present in what is quite a weedy venue. So, in terms of how I do it, first thing I do is cast out into the swim, line it up with a far horizon marker, which is the pointy tree in the background for me, and then feel for a drop. Now, you get three drops generally. No drop, which indicates you're in a weed bed, a muffled drop, which indicates there's light weed on the bottom, or, which is what I'm looking for, a really clean, hard drop, which indicates a firm lake bed. Now, as I said, on that cast, no drop whatsoever for me. So what I do, as I know it's in a weed bed, is almost a bit like drop shotting. I just flick the lead up with my tip and feel it back down. I keep skipping it, picking up a little bit of line at a time until I feel it drop off the weed bed and onto something firm, just like that. So right there, I've had a little firm donk as it's come off the back of that weed bed. And I'm slowly, very gently gonna pull the rod tip and it's coming before it's hit another weed bed. So there's a spot in there, which is gravel. So I'm gonna clip that up, wind that in. Now it doesn't always happen that quickly. So I'll take that as look. I'm gonna clean the weed off the lead and then cast back to that same horizon marker. But again, this time I'm clipped up and hopefully I'll get a nice firm drop just on that spot the other side of this weed bed. There's the clip, and there's that firm drop. So there is a presentable area. It's a little bit silty, but then it goes into gravel right there. So a gap between two weed beds. I'd essentially say I've got probably a rod lengths pull on that spot, and that, if I whip the lead up really quickly, hopefully it'll come back clean and indicate that it's presentable. And there you go, that lead is clean, there's no weed around it, which means it's presentable, I'm able to fish on it. What I would do just before I cast out is I'd put a old rig on it, I'd cast it out to that clip, I'd pull it back just to check that the rig comes back clean, because sometimes if you're fishing, fish just show right over the spot right there. Um, sometimes when, you do, when you're fishing in siltweed, for instance, it might feel like you get a firm drop and you might bring a conventional lead back, but unless you test it again with that rig, you never really know, and you might be fishing not well presented over a load of silkweed. So I'm just gonna do that before I cast out. Then it's a case of getting the rods clipped up to the same range as this, out on the spot, it's a little bit of bait, and hope clear water graces me with its first fish today. Well, it's the first time in the session that I've managed to get the Titan up and sit down. Uh, I'm in peg two. I've managed, in terms of the rods, to find a clear spot, 10 and a half wraps, and I've got two solid bags on that. I haven't put any bait over the top because there's been fish showing in the area, so I don't want to thrash it with a spawn and cause them to move out. I just want to try and nick a bite. And on the other rod, which is my left-hand rod, there was a concentration of fish showing to the left, away from sort of that spot that I've found. Uh, and the drop there was a muffled drop, which indicates that it was light weed. And instead of trying to find a more clear area, I wanted to fish over that weed. To do that, initially I started with a long boom and a lead clip, a supple broom and a hinge stiff rig. And all I did on that is make sure that I had two nuggets of foam in a little bit of mesh PVA that I nicked on so that the lead would touch down in the weed, the hook length would stand proud, and when they dissolved, it would flutter nice and lightly and sit right on that weed, ready for one of the carp. But 
Subsequently, after that, the shows that I was seeing weren't shows that were reminiscent of fish feeding on the bottom. There weren't clouds of bubbles coming up, they weren't coming up and clearing the gills out. They seemed to be up in the water. So with that rod, I've changed it to now fish a zig. Now, zigs in weed, in terms of how I fish them, I've got a, a three and a half ounce lead on a weed lead clip to ensure that on the take that lead is gone. Hopefully the fish comes up in the water, so does the line and I keep all of that away. But also what I've done is I've stepped up the breaking strength of my zig line. So I've got 12 pound zig flow um, and I step up the hook size. So I've got a size seven floater claw uh, with a zig screw on it. Now, Weed, obviously, in terms of gear, you have to be strong and resilient, and that's reflected in that presentation. And I've played fish through dense weed beds in the same weed that we're dealing with now, comfortably with that stepped up gear. I am, well, I have 17 hours left to go in the session. It's been a busy start, not really settled anywhere, but I'm feeling confident where we are. There's fish showing, and fingers crossed, it's gonna pop off. So, it has happened, to be fair, there's been that many shows out there that I'm quite surprised it's not happened before. I've just put three spoms of mix just out over where those rods were at 10 and a half wraps. One of the solid bags has run off. It's gone absolutely charging up the lake. The key is here is I'm fishing drop off inline leads. So the lead's gone on the take. And then all I'm doing is keeping the rod low and trying to keep the fish up in the water. You can see it on the surface out there. If you can keep the weed, if you can keep the fish above the weed and apply steady pressure, I don't like to play them too, too hard, then you've got the best chance possible at getting them in, really. But this is putting up a great account of itself. So we're at that crucial stage, really, where the fish is getting closer, but there is a big band of weed in front of me. It's already got weeded once. And all I've done is keep the pressure on and let him kick through that band of weed, which he has so far. He's now decided that he wants to go back in that bit of weed. And again, it's just a case of keeping steady pressure. Don't force it. And eventually, there he is on top. He'll kick free, which he has done just there. Oh, I can see the little trimmed down Scopex squid pop up in his mouth. He's in. I won't use cliches, but that is an absolute view. A lovely scaly fish, that. With the fish in the net, before I took it out, I decided to get a new solid bag tied on and back out to the spot after wrapping it up at my designated range, which was 10 and a half wraps. Out went three additional spoms, just to spook the fish off the spot, keep a little bit of scent in the area, and then I dealt with the fish. Well. There you have it in the textbook northern rain, a ray of sunshine that lights it up, a beautiful linear. On that little spot, fishing bags, nice and tight, a little bit of bait over the top, and it's gone. I think there's about 16 hours or so left, but I'm absolutely chuffed to get off the mark, and even more chuffed that it's a beautiful, dark, scaly one from Clearwater. What a fish, what a fight, singing in the rain. Shortly after, the heavens decided to open, in came some wind, and it was batting the hatches time. But in amongst that, I managed to receive another take, and gracing my lander net was another linear, this time a lot smaller, but just as characterful and beautiful. Hey, we love the rain, mate, especially when we're in the rain and the plan's coming together. Go on. Well, fish number two, another bite in a very short space of time. And I'm in the linear party by the looks of it. Another fine example of clear water and weed and what type of dark, beautiful, scaly fish they can produce. Um, again, off the same spot on the solid bag rig, lead discharged, managed to play it in a few hairy moments in the weed. But before I got this fish out, I made sure I put a few spawns just over the same spot and then got my rods back out there because it's bite time, two bites very quickly. Who knows, maybe a third. If not, 
I'm chuffed to bits. What a fish. Well, darkness is around us. It's been a busy day. I started in that back bay, the fish drifted out. I move into peg two, and I've finally, in the last hour or so, managed to get that spot, that little clear spot in the weed rocking with a couple of fish, a lovely couple of nice linears. Then the weather came in and we had all sorts kicking off, rain, wind and the lot. It's managed to calm down now. I have though, in the last five minutes or so, had two eels. Let's hope they're an exemption and there's no more throughout the course of the night. I'm gonna get some food down me, keep working that spot. I have placed one rod off the spot in the softer low lime weed on that hinge supple rig that I showed earlier. So fingers crossed that might go as well, but all rods are out there. There's some bait on the spots. I'm gonna tuck in, get myself in my bivvy, get ready for hopefully a few more bites throughout the course of the night or at bite time in the morning. Well, after a relatively quiet night, just before first light, my left hand rod burst into action with this rather discus shaped butte. Now, this did not come on the solid bags fishing to that clear spot where the other fish had come from. This was actually me fishing in the weed itself. And after I've taken some stills and got him back, I'll talk you through exactly how I approach fishing in the weed itself, what rigs <coughs> and what will hopefully snare you, your own, weed cork carp. Now in terms of the rig that I use to present fishing in the weed itself, it's pretty simple. To start with, main line has to be strong. You're fishing in the weed, so it's got to be durable, robust, and be able to deal with the weedy situations that you're potentially going to get a bite in and have to pull the fish through. I've gone for 20 pound bullet. To that, you'll see there's no leader at all. When I'm fishing in the weed itself, I don't want a leader because I don't want the weed to cling around a leader knot, which can cause problems. It's another point, if you like, at which the weed can gather and bunch, which is what you do not want when you're fishing in the weed. In terms of the clip arrangement, I've got a weed lead clip. That means that the lead discharges as soon as there's a take and I fish a good sized lead with it. There, I've got a three ounce lead and I'm fishing around about 10, 15 wraps at most in this current situation. From there, working down, I've got an anti-tangle sleeve and the boom section is made up of 35 pound armor link. Now, the length of that boom section is denoted by what I find out there. When I'm leading around, I'm feeling for a soft and muffled, but some sense of drop. If there's no drop at all, I won't try and present the rig in it. But if there is a soft drop, even if it's really marginal, what I'll try and do is bring in some of the weed that's around that spot, gauge how long I think the weed is, and then fit the boom to give myself an allowance for that length. For example, if the weed is a foot that I'm bringing back, I'll make a foot and a half to two foot boom. And all that will happen in terms of when I cast it out there, from the boom section, I've got a choddy style hinge arrangement. So I've got a ring swivel, I've got some uh, chod link, and then I've got either a bait screw or a ring with a size five uh, twister chod hook. All I do is foam that up with a little parachute, two bits of foam in a PVA bag. And when I cast that out, the lead plunges into the weed. This sits buoyant with the parachute. As soon as that dissolves, it it falls down and rests and finds a natural resting place within that weed. That is my go-to rig for fishing in the weed itself. Right, well, we are down to the last hour. The fish seem to have moved off of my area, certainly. They're showing a little bit more to the right of me and unfortunately a move isn't on the cards because it's busy. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep one rod on that baited spot in the hope after a couple of spawns that maybe it sparks some activity if any fish are drifting by. I'm gonna to cast to any showing signs of fish with a zig and then I'm just putting a few floaters out on the drift into this shallow bay just in case I get an opportunity off the top in the last hour. It's all hands to the pump. There's an hour to go. 
I just need an opportunity. Fingers crossed we can finish in style. But if not, it's been impressive, it's been epic, and I've thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. I think there is like an insecurity in built in whether you are presented, whether the fish can actually find your hook bait uh, and take it and therefore give you a bite. I think that is always in the back of people's minds with regards to weed, uh, especially if you don't or are not used to fishing weedy venues. It becomes a sort of, uh, yeah, a bit of a leap of faith when you put a rig out there um, to know that you're, you're adequately presented for a carp to take you. Also, uh, there's trepidation around getting fish through it, getting fish stuck in it and also being able to just effectively angle. Sometimes, I know in my formative years when I fished weedy venues for the first time, I didn't necessarily have the basic skill set to be able to properly feel the lead down, to be able to decide for exactly what I was fishing over, and I'd have fish showing on me all the time uh, and not be receiving any bites. So I think it's just, it's just confidence, um, which only comes with putting yourself in that situation learning through your own experience and information around and about that makes you comfortable fishing in weed. But I think generally, speaking to anglers around the banks, weed is sort of a mental barrier that doesn't necessarily need to be there, but a lot of the uh, apprehension is around whether they are actually presented in their fishing and whether they can catch on anything other than a blatant clear spot. My 60 second tip for fishing in the weed is all to do with bait. Now, if you put out boilies into the weed, they're dense spherical objects, they sink down to the weed, they're not always visible for the fish. Whereas fishing flake, as I have here, because of the nature of the different sized particles, the lightness in it, it flutters down and sits at lots of different levels within the weed making sure it's visual, attractive, and allowing you to present over the top of it a hook bait. The fish can see it, they hone in on that weed where the food is, they start feeding, hopefully in due course, they pick up your hook bait too. If you're fishing in the weed, get yourself some flake. Five, four, three, two, one. There you have it, that's the end of my 24. No last minute glory, despite the fact that I worked as hard as I could, unfortunately, the fish have moved off me and being a busy day ticket, I'm not able to move and get on them. But I've thoroughly enjoyed bringing it to you. I've thoroughly enjoyed the fishing at Clearwater. And I hope above all else that the next time you tackle a weedy water, some of those tips and hints come into play and you're able to share some weed fishing success.